prepare themselves mentally. If you're going to go into a fight, you got to prepare your mind for the fight. And with us, we got to prepare our mind for the fight. Because the enemy is not fighting against us. We're not fighting against the enemy with flesh and blood. Amen. Amen. So first of all, we got to prepare our mind. Because actually, the battleground is in the mind. It's in the mind. If you can get your mind together and set your mind on Jesus, he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So we got to prepare ourselves for the battle. And it's in the mind. Because the devil, he's a spirit. And he comes to us. And he talks to us. And if, he, if we listen to him, we'll give in and we'll give out. We will quit or we will fight naturally so. You know when your back was up against the wall, sometimes you said, God, you're not doing it fast enough for me. So I'll do it. Come on now. Somebody besides myself has said, I can fight this fight. Just let me loose and let me go. I will take care of business. But we can't fight this fight naturally because this is a spiritual fight that we're in. We have to prepare ourselves. For the, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war or fight after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty. Hallelujah. They are strong. Yes, 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 yes. Due to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes, we have some strongholds. What? Strongholds on your mind. In your mind. Strongholds with your children. They won't act right. Strongholds with alcohol and drugs addiction. It may be you, but you know somebody that has it. And we're praying for them. And these are strongholds. But we got to cast down these strongholds. Praise God. Praise God. Strongholds of addiction, imprisonment. Too many of our children are going to prison. Too many of them. I looked at the statistics of the NAACP just for 2014. And it says that there are 2.3 million that are in prison, costing more than $200 billion for the, for the state and the federal to take care of. They're spending a lot of money, and more than one-third of us are part of that 2.3 million. Right at 1 million blacks are imprisonment. This is just on the man's side. We're in a fight. We're in a battle. Young people, look and listen to your parents. Give ear to what they're saying to you. They're not trying to take your life. They're not trying to or keep you from anything. They are trying to keep you from harming yourselves. They are trying to keep you out of danger. So it's a stronghold in you when you be rebellious and contentious. That's a stronghold. And we are praying for you. Because we don't want any of you to perish. We don't want anybody else to be going to prison. We want any of us to be shot down in the streets. But listen, young folks. There is authority, and God has given the police officers authority. When they tell you to stop, stop. I don't care if you say you don't have nothing, you haven't did nothing, stop. No, you're not listening to me. If you know 
that you know that you know you haven't did anything, stop. If they say lay on the ground, get on the ground. If they say crawl, crawl. Because you can come back and fight another day. You can fight another day. You can fight another day. The young, the woman that was beat that we saw on television, that the highway patrol, she was just walking, snatched her and began to beat her like she was a man. But she won a fight. She didn't fight back. She won her fight. Oh, yes, she did. The world saw it, didn't they? And she's walking around with some money in her pocket because she held her peace and learned to fight another day. You can rebel, but they have the power. And they're going to use their power. And they're going to support one another. You better listen. You better listen. I know you've been taught that somebody hit you. You better hit them back. Listen, parents. We got to change some of our strategies. Woo, you got to change some of your strategies. What well, we're telling our children. I know there are teachers here, and I have one in my family, no two in my family. And there are many around in this room. They can tell you our children and the children today are rebellious as you ever seen them before. They will cuss you out and you've seen it on television. You've seen it. They'll cuss you out. They will beat the teacher up. And if the teacher try to defend themselves, they will have them arrested. For sure, the parents will be, the teachers will be in trouble because they defend themselves. We shouldn't send our children to school to be ignorant and beating up on people, anybody. Let me tell you what I told my, one of my brothers. I told him all bad folks are either dead or in prison. And ask me where he at. He's dead. The first one, 19, dead. I told him then, if you just listen to me, you'll save your life. I said, all bad people are dead and in prison. He got to prison, and then he came out, and someone killed him. Yes, yes, he made the news. Yes, he did. Los Angeles Riverbed was shot, uh, shot in the face with a start-off shotgun, double-barrel shotgun, shot all half of his face off, cut both of his legs at the knee like a chicken, and threw his body in the Los Angeles Riverbed. And my mother had to endure that when I say that I've been through the storm and the rain. Oh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. We got to cast down, Mother, these strongholds. Get these children while they're young, while they're little, while they're toddlers. Teach them and train them up in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they will not depart from it. Train them up. They already have the Adamic nature of Adam in them already. So they already going to rebel anyway. But we got to put the truth, the word of God, inside of our children. We got to take them instead of letting them see in these cartoons and all of this mess that's on television. That stuff don't do nothing but fight and hit and kill all the time. Have you looked at it? Sit down and look at it. I mean, what I think about even when I was a child, it was going on, and it's what's going on with mine was a child, and I decided to put it on Sesame Street. Now, I don't know what Sesame Street is doing now, but I'm going to tell you, it learned them their ABCs. It helped them to count. Amen. It learned them a lot of good lessons. Instead of just putting them in front of that television, and they're sucking, and they're banging, and sit down and watch that little one. He's going to be hidden. She's going to be punching that dog and hitting it and tearing it up and breaking up stuff. We spent a whole lot of money. You don't have to say amen because 
I have five children, 16, 18 grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren. So I know something about this, amen? I know something about it. They get the toys. Soon as you buy them the toys, they'll sit down and take it apart and tear it up and throw it away. Where are they getting it from? They're getting it from television. We need to sit down and have a little talk with them. They say even in prison, even the ones they take a study, even in the study that I looked at this weekend at the NAACP, it said the ones that sits around the table have at least dinner with their children, dinner or some kind of meal with their children at least once a day or I'm going to say once a day or at least once a week. Now, we didn't have, we didn't, we couldn't do it every day, but a Sunday evening when we got from church, amen, heart and family, we sit around the table and we talked and we discussed and there was no subject. Are oh, you listening to me, parents? There was no subject that we didn't touch. Because if we don't tell them, somebody else will. And you better tell them early because they learning earlier than we, than we did. Then they can tell us something that we don't know. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We got to bring our thoughts together. Bring our minds together. The book says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we have to let the mind of Christ be in us. Amen. With the word of God, this is how we're going to cast them down. We're going to cast down these strongholds with the word of God. The word of God, Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Paul said in Hebrew 4 and 12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. B, we need to watch and pray. Jesus said, watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. A whole lot of times we want to stay on our knees and not get up off our knees. But honey, let me tell you, why are you in that closet? You better come out of there. Because the devil is working while you're in the closet. He planning while we're in the closet. You better watch and pray. Watch. You better be observing. You better be looking around. You better see the character. You better know your child, what he's capable of doing, instead of sitting around saying that my child won't do it. Your child will do just what mine would do and anyone else's child would do. He will do it even if he's trained not to do it, he'll do it. That's why we got to pull down the stronghold. They see surveys all the time. They put little kids in a room, and their parents have told them, never touch a gun. But when they put them in that room, what they do? They go get that gun. They, their parents say, no, my child will never, 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 never do that. First one, when he got the gun with the pointed and shoot, trying to shoot somebody. See what I'm saying? A good thing is for us not to buy our children no guns. We need to fast. These can't come out not but by Jesus said by fasting and praying. Be strong in the Lord and fight the good fight of faith. My second point, know your enemy. You better know who you're fighting against. You better know what his temperament is or her temperament is before we start to fight. Amen. Know the temperament of your enemy. Know what kind of weapon he's going to use. Amen. Amen. You could go, <laughs> back in the day, we fought. Fists. We fist fought. But not today. 
You can think you're going to get in a fist fight if you want to, and some bullets and some, and some whole bunch of other stuff will be flying at you. Amen. Say amen, somebody. They're not fist fighting anymore. They taking out the guns and the weapons on you, amen. They doing a sneak attack. You got to know their, their temperament, amen. You got to know the attitude of the ones you're fighting for. For your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So these are that we are fighting against. Let's look at this. Authorities. We're fighting against authorities. I'm going to say natural authorities. Right now there's a fight in, with authorities that we have the children in the school. Hey, hey, look, the Congress against the president. It's a whole lot of, lot of things that's going on. People that have authority to do certain things. Okay, let's break it on down. Police officers. They are authorities, amen? Yeah. And a lot of these people are using their authority wrong. Yeah. 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 And they know they're wrong. You can say it's the devil it is, the devil in them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Against the rulers. This is, this, is, this is dividing these. These are commas in between this. Against rulers. We got rulers not only in the heavenly realm, we're not only fighting against demons, but we're uh, fighting against people as well. People are fighting against us, and we got to know how to fight with them as well. And we're still, we're not talking about physical fights. We're talking about spiritual fights. Because even though they may be fighting physically, we are fighting with the word of God. We are fighting by watching and praying we are fighting by fasting and praying. We are fighting about watching. So then we'll know when the enemy come in and try to trick us, when the enemy come in and try to take us another way, then we got to tell us, don't do that. I can tell you that I can tell my children, and they are witness here, that when they started to do something, God would tell me, and he would show me, and I would tell them, you can do it if you want to, but you can't hide an elephant and a pregnant woman. Ask me, then I say it. You got to know the devil's cunning devices, amen. You got to cut him off at the corner. God would tell you, did not God in the Bible say, when the, when the enemy comes, say, let's go up on the mountain and fight because Israel been fighting and they got down in the valley. So we're going to go down in the valley. We're going to cut them off. But God had a prophet in our hey God, in the midst of them and said, look, you're going to go this way because they are setting up a trap that way. So we got to be wise as serpents, but we got to be harmless as doves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This fight is not a natural fight, but we got to fight. Hey, hallelujah. Rulers, authorities of the darkness of this world. Because Satan has been a, given authority over this world. Spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. There are cities, listen to me. There are cities that the devil and... And communities, you got to watch. There are communities filled with drugs. That's a force. That's a force. That's why we need to, those are, wherever area we stand in, we need to be praying and pulling down those strongholds. And you need to be telling the devil, no, you can't come in here with that. You can't come in and set up that. We got to be active. We got to be proactive. We just can't sit up in here and pray, and that's all. But God says, since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. But the violent, whoo, glory, take it by force. We just can't sit up and let the devil run us out of our homes. Oh, my God. Take things from us. We got to take it by force. Hallelujah. 
That was Jesus said that. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent got to take it by force. We, are, we can go into to the city halls. We can go into the courthouse. We can go down to the police department and tell these uh, uh, police officers, tell the, the chief of police, tell the ones that's over the sheriff department, we can demand that they speak to us. You know this. But we're sitting down. I'm just going to pray. No. There is a time to pray. And then there's a time to get up. Faith without works. That's what the book said. Faith without works is dead. We can have our faith, but James says, show me your works. Show me your faith, and I'll show you my works by my faith. We got to get up. Like Pastor Harden, you have to stir up the men sometimes and say, let's go down to City Hall and let's make some noise. Our children shouldn't be down there. We should be down there making some noise. The adults should be down there. The fathers and the mothers should be down there. Praise God. Like the young woman on the television. Yes, a whole lot of people are saying that was wrong. Now, I'm not going to say the hidden upside the head was good, but I'm going to say she saved her son. What do you know if, there, if a bullet wasn't scheduled for him that night, but she came and got him and pulled him out of that situation? I can say one of my children, he was a very, <laughs> he, he was very active and get off into things. And my brother, my oldest brother, he, he was uh, in a club. He was at uh, this biker club and they had a party. I think it was a Halloween party. And I missed one of the children. You probably know who it is before he even say it. I missed one of them. And I said, that boy, he done went down there because cause, cause my brother Robert said, uh, we're having a party. We're inviting the kids to come down. I said, okay. He done got, I said, don't go down there. And we don't get involved in that. We don't get involved. But no, he won't candy and whatever gift they was giving away, he was going. I went right down there and went right up in there and said, look, you know, I'm coming to get you. So when you put fear in your children and they know that they're going to look around, they may see you. Now, that wasn't Fred. That was another one. <laughs> Fred was the one that came along at the era that they first started sagging. And someone told me he was sagging. And I said, Fred, I heard you were sagging. I said, now, here's the, here's the thing. You ain't going to be sagging around here. And you're not going to be sagging at school either. So you got to watch. You got to watch your children. You got to go to school in, in, in Canito and see what they doing and we'll see what they got on. Uh-huh. And so I saw him. I said, listen, let me tell you something. If I see you sagging, wherever I see you sagging at, that's where I am. Going to get out of my car. And I said, I'm going to kick your behind all the way home. That's what I said. That's what I said. He must have believed it because he didn't say it. <laughs> you got to put some fear in him. Let him know, you know, sit down, Jamari, go sit down. Third point, know your weapon. We got to know our weapon. And we got to know our opponent's weapon. We got to know what he's using as well. Amen? Now, we have some weapons and we have two kinds of weapons. We have a defensive, we have a defensive weapons, and we have offensive weapons. Amen, amen, amen. And I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to read this uh, third part, know your weapon. And, and in Ephesians 6, and I'm going to go to the 13th verse, and it says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil come, you may be able to stand your ground. You're going to stand your ground because you're strong and you're not afraid because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So we're going to stand our grounds. Amen. 
Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around our waist. So we're going to take this belt of truth that's buckled around our waist. Amen. And then we're going to take the breastplate of righteousness. Now, when I, I, I have heard for years that we don't run because there is, no, um, there is no armor for the back, but I beg you different. The ancient times, they had the breastplate that fit halfway around and hit the side. Then they had a, the other part of the breastplate hit the back because there were vital organs that had to be protected against the spears and the daggers, amen, and the swords, amen. So they had, a, they had, a, they had the, the belt that was around their waist. And then they had their feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now the scripture tells me, Hebrew 12, I think 14, follow peace with all men. I'm going to follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the, see the Lord. In addition, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith. Scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. So we got to take the shield of faith. Because the shield of faith, we can use. Amen. We can use this shield of faith. Amen. This is, I believe, this is my, off, my defensive. My offensive. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down in a minute. Take the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fiery darts or arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation. Why do you want to take the helmet of salvation? Again, we want to protect our mind. Amen? This is the central nervous system, I'm going to say. I'm not, I'm not a nurse, but uh, Lauren is here and some other nurses. Sister Kathy is here. I've learned this not in, nurse, not in nursing school, but right here at Long Beach Bible Institute where we teach abnormal uh, psychology. And then when you're teaching abnormal psychology, it tells us that our brain, it has the, it's the central uh, nervous system of everything. And let me tell you why. If your brain dead, your heart can be working, but you have no motion, no movement. Because the brain control everything. You get that? The brain control everything. So we need this helmet of salvation. We have given our hearts and mind to the Lord. We have accepted the Lord as our Lord and Savior. So we are saved, amen, by his power. And by the blood of Jesus, we are saved. So we got on the helmet of salvation to protect our mind, our nervous system. Because this nervous system, if this shut down, it's going to shut down your heart. Amen. Your sense of taste, your sense of smell, your sense of feeling. That's why when you have a stroke, it, it, it damages and you, you know, you, and you can't get it back. You know, a certain parts of stroke, if it damages the left, if it's on the left side, it's control, the left side controls the right side. Amen. So then you it cripple or drag and that. So we want to put on the helmet of salvation. That means we want to give our heart, soul, and mind to the Lord. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance. So we want to persevere. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to break these up just in case you don't know. I'm, I'm going to identify the defensive armors, armors for protection. The helmet for the head. The girdle for the loins. This is, we need to protect this to, to brace the armor tightly against the body and support uh, from, from daggers, from swords, and breastplate is two parts. I told you that it covers the breast and the other to cover the back to protect the vital organs of the body. It extended down to the legs, and then it had the brazen boots from the feet to control the leg, the feet, and the leg. The shield to protect the body from, from blows. 
and from cuts. And then our offensive weapons, somebody tell me what our offensive weapons are. Hey, we're going to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, but also our loins need to be girded around with truth. We need to be truthful with one another. We need to be truthful with ourselves. So we, with the, with the, with the uh, girdle of truth, a breastplate of righteousness, feet sharp with the preparation of the gospel, the shield of faith, because this is going to block everything that's coming our way. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I may not see, I may not be able to physically see that my son and my daughter is going to change. But guess what? I know they're going to change. I know they're going to change. Know why? Because I got faith. And the faith is substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God would not fail me because he said, if you ask anything in my name, he said, I will do it. He said, ask and you shall be given. He said, seek and you shall find. He said, knock and it shall be opened unto you. And then when you look at the synonym for that, it's said, ask. Ask. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In my conclusion, I'm coming in. In life, we will be faced with many fights. But this fight is not yours. This battle is not ours, mothers. This battle is not ours. Young folks, start praying for your children right now. Start teaching them right now. Start teaching them behavior right now. Start teaching them respect right now. Start teaching them to honor you and their fathers right now if they have one that's in the home, amen? And even if they have long gone, still teach them to respect their children because if you teach them to disrespect them, they're going to disrespect you. Hello? They're going to disrespect you. If you teach them to disrespect Either one, they're going to disrespect you. They won't have no respect for you. Praise God. In my conclusion, if we live, if we will be faced, we will be faced with many fights, but this fight is not yours. Uh, notice what, what God said to Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 20 and 13. He says, and I wanted to read this, and and. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. I wanted to make a point with this. Jehoshaphat was faced, was, was, in, was facing a battle. He had been through some battles, and he was facing the greatest battle that he had ever encountered. Three, I believe, three nations had joined their forces together against him. And he didn't see any way out because they had him hemmed in. So he couldn't get out. But he prayed to the Lord. And then after he prayed to the Lord, I believe the spirit of the Lord put it within his heart to write God a letter. Sometimes we have to write God a letter. Sometimes we have to write out what is really our hearts because sometimes it's too much for us to just say, and sometimes it's coming so fast at us. The devil comes in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord, oh God, will lift up a standard against him. Amen. And Jehoshaphat wrote out a letter, and he took that letter and he laid it before the Lord. As many of us need to do for our children, because they are in a battle, and we are in a battle with them. And they're disobedient. They're ungodly, unthankful. They're unruly. They don't listen to anybody. They got their own minds. And they want to do their own things in your house. Not so. Not so. Not so. You're not bringing your girlfriend in here. You're not bringing your boyfriend in here. You're not laying up whoremongering and sinning no so, because that is a sin before the Almighty God, and he is going to curse your house, and I'm going to get the devil out. Yes, Lord, can't come up in here laying up in the house. You got to watch. 
and pray that you enter not into temptation. Don't let them bring no drugs up in your house. None of that stuff up in your house. Don't let them smoke up in your house. Make them go outside. Jesus. 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 And then you stand. And then you lay your letter before the Lord like Jehoshaphat did. He laid his letter before the Lord. And he said, Lord, you see this great company. And we have to say in our heart, Lord, you see this great company that is coming against us. Us as a people to not just destroy our children because we have a whole, my God, generation. Two generations. Of our people, our children, our black children, this is sad, are being destroyed with drugs. Go to Skid Row. Go down on Skid Row. There is a sea of blackness. A sea of it. A sea. They are gone. Their minds are gone. They are shattered. But you don't have to be like that. Our children don't have to be like that. Because the stronghold of drugs in our community, don't allow it in your home. You can't bring that in here. Because if you bring it in here and I find it in here, I'm going to put you and it out. That's one thing about a battle. In a fight, you're going to gain some ground like the United States fighting over there in Iraq and Iran and everywhere else they fighting. You're going to gain some ground and you're going to lose some ground. And then you're going to get at a holding point. And I'm saying to greater open door women and to the world wide web, hold your position. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. You know when you get ready to fight somebody, you just not going to, you got a position. Come on now. It's a position. Y'all think I used to fight, didn't you? Yeah. 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 If you get ready to fight, you going to get in a position. You bad enough, bring it. Bring it. But you're going to position yourselves. So we as saints of God, as mothers, we're going to have to position ourselves. And say, not so, devil. You can't have my son. You can't have my daughter. That son that said, that's standing six foot three, 200, no, 300 and some pounds, you can't have him. I don't care if he's grown. No, you can't have him. That's my seed. You can't have him. God said I could call it. He said I could say it. He said I could ask him. No, you can't have that one. That one that's six foot five. No, you can't have that one either. Can't have him. So the kingdom of God is suffering violence. But we got to take back our children. We got to take back our children. And your children are looking at me and I'm saying this. But you got to stand your ground and take back your children. Tell the devil no. Fast and pray for them. Anoint them with all. Even if you have to go in their room and anoint their pillows. Look under their pillow. Look under their bed. Look under the mattress. Open every drawer, every crack you can find. Throw out everything that's not right. Because it's your house. Oh, yeah. So stand your ground, regardless of what the devil said. One was bold enough to tell me, I love my stuff, and ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm like, what? The devil lives a lie. Mm -hmm. Ask me where he is and what he's doing. Yeah, he's an elder now. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. 
That's what I'm talking about. You, they may be big, but they don't have the power that God has. I has God, the God kind of power. I have the dunamis power. I have the power to take authority over the enemy. Because God gave me the dunamis power. And he said I can fight the good fight of faith. And believe you, honey, me, I'm fighting a good fight of faith. And I'm saying, devil, you can't have him. You can't take him. He's not doing no more drugs. He's not drinking no more alcohol. He's coming in and acting like he got some sense. And he's bringing forth the word of God. And I'm calling my daughters from the north, south, east, and west. I'm calling them out of the house, out of the whole houses. I'm calling them out in the name of Jesus. I'm calling them out of the bars. I'm calling them out the street. I'm calling them out the gutter ghettos. I am calling them out. Said, come out from among you and be ye separated, said the Lord. Touch not my anointed and don't do my prophet no harm. I'm calling them out. Can't have my son. Can't have my daughter. Can't have my grandson. Because greater is he that's in me than the he that is in the world. Greater God is in me. God is in me. And God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is everywhere. You see everything they do. You see everything they say. They may hide it from me on Facebook. Oh, but they can't hide it from God. And God is in me. And I'm closing. And Jehoshaphat, when he called on God, God went in the camp. And he said, told the prophet, tell Jehoshaphat, this battle is not yours. I come to tell you, mothers, this battle is not yours. You got some kids acting up. You got some sons and daughters acting up. Grandchildren acting up. This battle is not yours. Stop acting like it's yours and you can fix it and you can do it. Because as bad as I am, I can't fix it and I can't do it. It's going to take the Lord. And he said, look, this is what I want you to do. Now, thanks to God, this is what I want you to do. I want everybody to stand. Everybody to stand that can stand. This is what the, this is what the prophet told the, told Jehoshaphat. He said, "This is what they want you to do. I don't want you to get no guns. I don't want you to get no swords, no spears. 